Um, hi. All right. Yeah, you can you can cut this video as much. You can trim it if you want, so you don't have to start now. <laughs> but yeah. You want to? Do you want to introduce yourself? Um, sure. Yeah. Talk. So, like, what's sort of the uh, the context in which you want me to introduce myself, and sort of what? Give me like a quick high level of what you're looking to ask. As a tutor. Or just for the for the sake of the of the conversation, like at a high level, you want it, you want to ask me about education in yeah in what sort of context um in the so the context of which the conversation is one whereby um i want to get your view your point of view um as regards education and the possibility of everybody or having getting access to education not only primary or secondary i'm talking like lifelong education and how that relates to your experience in being a tutor a tutor in a field where all you need to all you need to learn is the knowledge of is being literate and being numerate basically oh, okay so so from the context of, of being a tutor where um the the, the, the goal is is yeah. to become literate have the have the um the, the students become literate no 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 what i'm saying is um you're a tutor so um you're a tutor in a field where you do not need any form of specific education to learn what you're teaching. Oh, so you're, you, are, you are kind of thinking about what I did as like an instructor at Circuit Stream, essentially. Oh, exactly. So you're looking for my feedback based on my experience with that. Exactly, exactly. I got you. Awesome, okay. So, yeah, um, so I'll give my background, then you can ask your questions, so I'll answer. So, so my background, um, I started... Uh, well, I went to university for engineering in 2006. Okay. I did my undergrad and then um, in electrical engineering, focused mostly on analog electronics. I found that I really enjoyed the, um, the intricacies and the nuances of analog electronics, um, which then led me into a master's degree in a microchip design for radio wireless applications. Um, all throughout my life, by the way, as well, I've always been very, very fascinated and interested in technology. Um, I think it started at a very young age when I was, I can remember way back to maybe when I was like four years old and my dad let me use his Apple IIc computer, which he, he had a, a IBM computer, but I was allowed to use the Apple, right? Because he was done with it. And then he also had a Vectrex um, gaming uh, machine, which came from like the the early 80s or late 70s so i got to play with that too and i i was just so fascinated by seeing what i saw on the screen what i could type on a keyboard and and see the result on the screen it was just such an interest there was such an interesting experience from that to be able to say in a in a game you know type the word go north in the game zork and the game replies to you says okay we've gone north and and then like you know it, it's like the interactivity of that especially at a young age is just like Wow, you know, it was really amazing, uh, the human experience. So anyway, um, that uh, led down a path of me um, really having, taking on a, a love for, for games. Um, always, always active, don't get me wrong. Uh, spent a lot of time outside, love the outdoors as well. But there was, but what really, ex what really interested my, me in my, in my mind, the thing I really wanted to learn about and do was, was technology related and, and, uh, and creating, creating these, this hardware or, or, or creating human experience, something that can provide human experience. And, and I really want to understand the, the nature of these machines that create this human experience. So maybe I'm going into too much depth, but um, that, that led me down the path of be wanting to become an electrical engineer, which I think was absolute right choice. And I uh, loved it. I absolutely loved my undergrad. It was challenging at times, but, um, but I just thought, found it so fascinating. So I did my master's degree, all right? All throughout this time, still enjoying gaming and, and all that, et cetera, staying in shape and whatever. Following my, my degree, uh, I started working at a company called Flextronics, who's an um, a, a international um, manufacturer, a global manufacturer, one of the largest electronics manufacturers in the world. Um, and uh, I did a lot of lab work. Uh, I traveled 
uh, around the world to various factories to debug, uh, essentially solve problems on the factory line, um, to, to fix broken, essentially, um, circuit boards and et cetera, understand root cause, and uh, do a root cause analysis and, and such. Also, at that company, I did, I did teaching. So I actually designed a course. I designed a course for wireless okay. electronics. So I actually hadn't probably never shared that. But uh, so I taught people uh, about RF, radio frequency electronics. Um, so these are engineers in the factory. They'd have a better understanding of what they're dealing with and how to solve problems. Uh, that went very well. And then I got into design work. So I started designing products. I've got some electronics back there on my desk, which is all basically stuff that I had designed when I was working at Flex. And then I went on to Semtech, did microchip design. All throughout that time, um, I, I was an early adopter of virtual reality. And uh, got it, I was extremely excited. I brought it to work. I showed the whole, you know, I showed everybody. <laughs> that's when it all, that's when the light, the light bulb went on. I'm like, this is, there's something special about this. And and uh, eventually, I started. I started developing games with it. Very shortly after, I I had purchased the the headset, and uh, and did that as a hobby. And um, then that turned into a career. So I switched my career over to VR development, game development. Um, and it doesn't mean that it's a permanent career shift. Um, I do see a lot of potential to combine hardware and and um, VR and other other forms of um, immersive media. Um, I'm really not VR. Like, no, I'm not. I'm not just you know sold on VR or AR. But there's any real technology that can provide value to people or or a great experience to people, right? So so VR is, is just the one that I think has a lot of potential in AR uh, right now. So um, yeah, that's that's me in a nutshell. Worked at Circuit Stream for eight months and did the uh, the teaching with Bawa. So. Um, I revamped the course uh, as well. I, I, I stripped down the course and then kind of not stripped it down entirely. I just I adjusted it, uh, changed the curriculum a little bit um, to my to what I thought would work better and, and such. And I think it's still undergoing improvements. Great experience, lots of uh, really good students. Uh, some challenges though, of course. Um, but uh, we had some great students like Fawaz who made the experience much very good. So. Uh, yeah, and now I'm a freelancer. That was a long. That was a long. Uh, long production. But yeah, <laughs> it works. Um, so I would start my question by asking, um, what's your thoughts about education generally? How do you see education? Do you feel something everybody needs? General. So I'm not talking of high level education, not university. I'm just talking education generally, whatever form or. Or, yeah, in whatever form or concept it might take. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's my thoughts on that? Um, so with education, um, I, I'm, a, I'm a very strong believer in, in education. Um, universe, going through university was uh, hugely beneficial for me and in, in the, in the way that I think and the way that I um, relate to the world or um, the way I act in the world, the choices I make. Um, I, I, I believe um, that, actually, can I, can I just take one quick break? I just want to grab some water, if you don't mind. Sure, sure, okay. sure, it's fine. Be right back in a second. I'll continue my thought. One second. So yeah, education um, for everybody. Um, I, I mean, education, uh, I think, yeah. So having an educated mind, um, it's not about what, you, it's not exactly about what you know, but it's that you know some, it's, it's that you know how to learn. For me, that's the most important part about education is it teaches people how to learn. So whether you're learning engineering or, biology or um, philosophy or languages you're you're, tr you're you're training your mind to think in a in a way that's not not um, how do I say instinctual 
but rather okay but rather um intentional yeah so, so if you if you're if you're thinking with a purpose uh you're you're you're, you're adding tools by by learning by by through education you're you're developing tools to solve problems or to understand reality um, mm. and that's and that's why i think education is so important for everybody because when you're faced with complicated challenging or or opportunity challenges complications opportunity you have you you have tools to deal with them yeah and you have the ability to learn um you have the ability to to learn on the go without form without needing a formal educator if you've already gone through the formal education if you know what i'm saying i go in yeah going. yeah so i think formal education is very good or even if it's not um it's very good to help people to develop these tools although i'm sure people can develop them on their own as well okay um so um i don't want to preempt anything but i remember you saying um growing up your dad let you use his mac and that's what really i mean picked your interest mm -hmm. and eventually the journey which you later went on um me there's an argument in this whole academic space this whole research about equity in education and the argument is between equity in opportunity versus equity in outcome or equity in results so what that means is should we create an environment where everybody regardless of social class ethnic regardless of your background you have an access to you have the same access to education as everyone or equity in outcome which means yeah we should give everybody the same access to education but we should also ensure that the results are the same or not not too far from each other so picking from your conversation like you said your dad is letting is the mark so that was like an equity of opportunity but from your own experience teaching at the the electronics company and at circuit stream which one do you think is 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 more important or would be vital which divide do you think would be vital to helping us really achieving this education for all or an equitable educational system globally ask this to clarify to help me understand the question a little bit better so the that we have equity of of opportunity and equity of outcome so yes is the question of, uh, more about um what's more important about no either one of the two or is the question about your own personal conviction what do you think is oh what, what do i think is continue that thought yeah what what do you, what do you think which one which of the two divides do you think is more appropriate in the time we are right now in the world uh, okay equity of, of opportunity or equity of, of outcome, uh, in the in the time in this world and then you also mentioned the the apple 2 the experience of that versus the yeah. uh the formal education no 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 i was just saying that i see that as an as equity of opportunity because you had access mm. which is what picked your interest yes. to eventually take you down the path which you did so yeah, I was just saying that as a statesman. It's like an example, essentially, in my life. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So yeah, that's actually a good, a good point that you brought up about the equity, uh, the the um, the opportunity, um, and, and essentially that was a tool to which 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 essentially it it, it 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 helped me to understand what it was that I wanted to learn, and it also did help me to learn in a sense because I'm 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 interacting with this with this uh, with this tool. Which eventually became my career, you know. So yeah. um, that I, I so today, what do I think is most important in terms of equity? Uh, should it be, from my experience, should it be the opportunity or the the equity of outcome? Well, first, I have to say that um, equity of outcome would seems to me to be a very a very challenging one. To both of them have their own challenges, but I think that one's a little harder to like quantify. Or to to ensure um, because it's like what does what does um, say success mean for our, for 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 someone who has gone through an education program of some sort you know what is what is successful what is pa what is pass fail and we use metrics in, in, in school to determine what that is um, like standardized testing um, 
So it's hard, I think, but then doing that globally is, is challenging. Um, so, and then also across fields, right? So if we're talking very general about education, you know, equity of outcome in language, in studying language versus equity of outcome in st studying engineering or, or studying uh, agriculture, you know, very different uh, metrics applied. Um, so so I, 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 I think right, and I think right now, um, the, 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 it's, it's, it's most important at this time to, 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 um, provide, a, I think, equity in opportunity, uh, is my, my gut feeling in that, um, <clears throat> we need, people are, are, um, in a very difficult, challenging time where they're isolated from, from, uh, from opportunity. They, they, they're there's less opportunity for people to be continuing and or starting education. Um, so, so I think that's, that's the, the priority. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In interesting. Thanks for that view. Mm -hmm. Um, my last, my final question would just be also again, taking from your experience, your fields of background, your life experiences, your vision, your dreams, what do you think would be an appropriate or worthy solution even if it's as little as fundamental or elementary or tertiary what would you say okay i said um from your like life experiences um dreams aspirations all of it put together what do you think a worthy solution to addressing this issue where we need everybody in the world to have access to education mm -hmm. so they can determine the kind of future they would have so yeah what, what do you think a worthy solution would be i think a worthy solution this, this does lead back to our discussions yeah, uh, about yeah. our ideas you know and uh, yeah. i do believe in it um is enabling it to me it's this it's it's because it, you can look at it in a different in a couple different angles perspectives uh is enabling the educators to be able to reach people at okay. a time where people cannot physically connect or are in person and the mm. institutions are not running as per normal. Um, mm. So enabling educators to reach potential and or existing and or potential students. Um, yeah. And um, also, and then the secondary, secondary is um, ensuring that the, the, the medium, the, the means at which or the medium um, for the students enables them to learn effectively. And I don't say that's absolutely secondary. I just mean that it's it's okay. Maybe those are actually both really important. Yeah, come to think yeah. of it. So that, that, yeah. that, those are both I think equally important because they address two different problems, right? One being yeah. the quality of education, the other being the equity of education. Yeah. <laughs> or the yeah, one is uh, equity of outcome and one is equity of. Uh, of opportunity. Uh, so they, they both address those two things I mentioned address both of those factors yeah. a little bit. Yeah. That's very general high level in my mind. Uh, yeah, so so summarizing your own your own solution, you're basically saying we need to start the, the globe, the world needs to start looking at solutions that creates a medium where tutors can teach and guide learners in in a scenario where there's no physical access. There's no access, maybe due to ec economic or social or social reasons, environmental reasons, and so on and so forth. Yeah. yeah. And also on, on the flip side, a, a medium that also ensures that the students learn and they learn in in a, in a way that it's it's appropriate for their environment as well. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. information and or and to remain connect and to stay connected um I said, yeah all okay. the things that help you to learn <laughs> okay. um thank you very much for your time yeah. we would we'll talk shortly soon <laughs> happy to happy to uh to answer your questions that was, that was really good questions man i would i would share my my blog with you soon so you could <laughs> in your, your feedback, my blog your blood yeah, blog, 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 blog post. Oh, blog, yeah. So you could 
see all these things as, as they're building up. So, I mean, yeah. that's as well. Yeah, send it over. From an academic standpoint. But yeah, thank you very much for the time. You bet, man. All right, man. Catch you later. Yeah.